Turn with me to Psalms 105. A couple places of scripture. Psalm 105. More text to that I want to read, but we're just going to read one particular verse there. And then Romans, Romans chapter 8. So in Psalms 105, Romans chapter 8. Thank God for Keisha. Last time I preached, she said, Daddy, I miss your preaching. <laughs> thank God for Jeremiah, and thank God for our grandchildren. And uh, so we look at Psalm 105, verse 39. Look at that. Come on, read it with me. Amen. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 14. Come on, read it with me. For as many. Amen. While you're going to your seat, just tell somebody, it's going to be a cloudy day. It's going to be a cloudy day. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a cloudy day. Never has there been a people, Minister Williams, never has there been a people who were so favored by God. Never, 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 never. I know you're blessed, but never has there been a people who were so favored by God like the children of Israel. Never, never. I know you've experienced the, the ultimate, but, but never like these people. He delivers them from the hands of the Egyptians only because of a promise he made to Abraham promised Abraham that he was going to do it. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that could do just what he said? <laughs> I'm talking about back his word up. Amen. And we find that, that he brings them out. If you look back in, Rome, in, in Psalms chapter, in Psalms 105 around verse 37, look what he says. He brought them out with silver and gold. Silver and gold. He brought them out, not empty-handed. He brought them out with silver and gold. He gave them a canopy, amen, a canopy made with a cloud. A canopy top made with a cloud in a desert. <laughs> made with a cloud in a desert. It's hot in a desert. It's dry in a desert. There's discomfort in a desert. But we serve a God that can give you comfort in a desert. Comfort where there's discomfort. My God. Yes, nobody was blessed like this. No, no, it's hot in a desert. It's hot in a desert. And we find that, that they had a shield that covered them in this desert. They had a shield. A shield, something that kept them from being hot. My God, I wish I had this growing up in plains. He gave them this, amen. And even, even, even in the midst of this, the hot sun of the desert could not scorch them. You're talking about completely covered by God. Yes, and we find that nothing seemed to touch this people. Nothing seemed to come against them because God had them covered. Sound like I'm talking to somebody up in here. Anybody can testify that God has kept you covered? When it looked like it was not working out, it worked out anyway. 
because God had you covered. He covered me. Now, look at this. Now, the, the, the desert is just the opposite at night than it is in the day. It's extremely hot during the day, but it's extremely cold during the night. But look at this, God. Just like he brought a pillar, a, a pillar of cloud by day, he brought a pillar of fire by night. Nobody like God. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He, he, he brought them heat. I, I looked at this and I said, wow. They had central heat and air in the desert. Central heat and air. It was central because everybody else didn't have what they had. Only God. They had so much favor on their life. Mr. David, Egypt was glad when they left. Glad when they left. Because God covered them so. No matter what they tried to do, God covered them. They tried to kill the baby boy, but God strengthened the women to have the baby and didn't need no midwives. Whatever they did, whatever, whatever, God covered them in every instance. God covered them in every instant. As a matter of fact, they were so glad they left, they said, leave. Leave. Go worship your God. When is it people going to be glad that we left because... We were worshiping our God rather than running our mouths. Come on, you've been around some people. You were glad when they left. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm just sorry. If you're going to leave because I'm talking about God, you might as well go ahead and leave now because that's all I got to talk about. That's... I don't, that's, that's all I've got. I don't have nothing else. If you, if you can't handle me talking about God, you might as well get to stepping. They were glad when they left. That's what it says here. That's what it says. Verse 38 says, Egypt was glad when they departed. For the fear of them had fallen upon them. The fear of of the people of God have fallen upon unbelievers. We're living in a day where, where unbelievers don't even regard us. And they do not regard us because we're not living a cloudy life. I, 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 just, I just really believe at some point, unbelievers ought to get uncomfortable being around you. If you're living in with a cloud, they said, Lee, get. they were glad when Israel left their country. Hmm. Now, how is it possible? How is it possible for them to be so unbelieving when God had been so good to them? How is it possible? How's it possible for them to walk in such unbelief when God had been blessing them at the same time? But you see, they had no choice but to follow God. They didn't know where they were going. They didn't know the way. As a matter of fact, the one that was leading them didn't even know the way. Moses said, it's time for me to see who leading me. It's time for me to see who's leading me. I'm hearing your talk, but I ain't seeing nobody. You're manifesting yourself in some strange ways. You, 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 you're showing up in burning bushes. You're showing up making water turn to blood. You're showing up putting frogs in the beds of the people. But it's time for me to see who's leading me. God said, well, what you got to understand, no man can see me and live. He said, but since you want to see my glory, 
I'm going to let you see my glory. I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rocks. I'm going to pass by you. I'm going to let my goodness pass by you. I'm going to let my mercy pass by you. I'm going to let my power pass by you. I'm going to let everything in me pass by you so you'll see my backside. I discovered that this word presence actually means face. In the Hebrew context, this word glory means face. So when you're saying, God, show me your glory, really what you're saying is, God, show me your face. Come on, y'all. You can't take one scripture and build a whole doctrine on one scripture. God, my God, as a matter of fact, God says, I'm going to come and I'm going to talk with you face to face. I'm going to talk to you face to face. I'm going to put a cloud in between us, though. Y'all ain't talking to me. See, see, when you start living cloudy, God will come in your house. He'll come in your car while you're driving. He'll come on your job. He'll come right where you are. Look at somebody say, but you got to live cloudy, though. Now back that thing up and say, it's going to be a cloudy day, baby. It, it's going to be a cloudy day. You just might see a cloud in my car when I go down the road. You, it's going to be a cloudy day. They didn't know. They didn't know where they were going. But Leon, they didn't have maps and atlases and GP. I knew you had one. They didn't have all of this. What you got to understand is even the GPS get its signal from above in the clouds. Y'all ain't talking to me. Even the GP, why are you talking about bragging about you got your iPhone and your Android with your directions, your maps on it? This signal still got to come from above. <laughs> come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, thank God for the cloud. 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 It's some stuff up in the clouds that you can't even see. My God, it's some power up in the cloud that you can't even see. And some of y'all get upset when it's a cloudy day. Get upset when it's cloudy. Messing your day up. Put some overcast on your day. Where my airplane riders at in here? Raise your hand. Mm. Tell your neighbor real quick, neighbor, what I discovered from riding in an airplane, it doesn't matter how thick the clouds are. I can soar above the clouds and the sun is always shining. I read your lips, Clander, above the cloud. Yeah, yeah. Tell somebody it's going to be a cloudy day. I, I didn't say a lovely day. I said a cloudy day. Yes, 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 yes. The signal still comes from above, from the clouds. Now look at this, look at this, look at this. The same cloud that brought them covering and protection. Look at this. The same cloud that brought Israel cool in the day and heat in the night brought Egypt fear in the day. Fear in the night. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. See, what you got to understand, let folk keep on talking about you. Let folk keep putting you down. You just got to know they can't go where you go. They can't handle what you handle. They can't put up with what you put up with. Exodus, Exodus. I, I got to move on, y'all. Exodus chapter 14. 
I'm, I'm, you read it. You read it. Exodus chapter 14, verse 23 and through 25. The same cloud came and dwelt upon the, the army of Egypt. Amen. The same cloud came and started dwelling over Egypt. Amen. But when the cloud, when the cloud came over them, they were pursuing after the children of Israel. But the wheels on the chariot started wobbling. I wish I had a witness in here. The wheels on the chariot started coming off. That they, they started recognizing that the same cloud that was a blessing to the people of God was a curse upon them. My God, you with your blessed self. You with your God covering self. You with your self that get stuff that you don't even qualify for. You with yourself get admitted to school that you ain't qualified to be admitted in. But you, my God, can I get somebody to give God praise for bringing a cloud your way? Don't you think everybody don't see the cloud? Don't you think that everybody don't know the cloud is on your life? Don't you think that they don't know that God got you covered? Oh, God, y'all, I need somebody to, oh, God, they ain't in my generation, Sister Tammy, but I know you there. I know you there. I know some of y'all there. Y'all to bounce back and say, can't touch this. Oh, yes. Can I get somebody who can say, I've been through hell and high water. But the cloud kept me covered. I've been sick. I've been in bondage. But the cloud brought me out. Sit down, sit down, sit down. You shouting too fast. You're shouting a little bit too fast. Sit down, sit down. You're shouting too fast. Why you tripping out when it go bad? Getting quiet now. Why is it you can just live all cloudy when it's going good? I don't think Israel had it all easy. But in the midst of everything they were going through, it was the cloud that was still blessing them, although it looked like a difficult situation. Now, now God could have taken them a shorter route to the promised land. They could have gone a shorter route. But the shorter route would have meant that they would have had to fight the Philistines. Y'all ain't talking to me. Okay, that didn't work. They would have had to fight giants. Now, they were prepared to fight, but they weren't ready to fight giants. I wish I had a witness in here. They were ready to fight, but they weren't ready to fight something bigger than them. They were ready to fight. They weren't right ready to fight something stronger than them. They were ready to fight, but they were not ready to fight something more fortified than they were. Y'all ain't talking to me. Cancer came my way, and I knew I wasn't fortified to fight it by myself. But I stood and grabbed the word of the Lord, and I stood up and I said, this sickness is not unto death. I need a witness in here. This right, oh my God. Oh, I might not be talking to everybody, but talk, I'm talking to folks who are going through some stuff right now. I need you to rub. I can say, this one right here won't gain victory over me. This one right here won't do for me what it want to do with me. This one right here ain't doing nothing but building my testimony. Why we can't live under the cloud every day? Why we can't live under the cloud every day? Jesus said, not my will. 
but thy will be done. We, our challenge is we got to learn to live a cloudy life every day, regardless of what's going on. Don't you know when Jesus died, not only did he put all things under his feet, but he put them under your feet too? Don't you know, just like he got victory, I could live a resurrected life and have victory over all of my obstacles, all of my circumstances, all of my situations, all of my disappointments. I still have victory over it all. Yes. Here we are. They could tangibly see a physical cloud over them. They could tangibly see and experience a cloud walking with them, going before them. Our challenge is, it's in the spirit now. It's in the spirit realm now. So, how is it that we be led by God? I'm talking about not just words. I'm talking about actually, physically being led by God, although I don't have a cloud hanging over my head. How is it that I can still have a cloudy day when I don't see the cloud? Y'all ain't talking to me. How is it? How is it that I can walk in victory when I don't even see the victory? How how is it that I can have promises when it looks like I don't have no promises? How is it that I can be led by God and not see God leading me? Well, first thing you got to do, you got to start applying yourself to the Word of God so that you know when it's God and when it's not God. Now, there's some things that we're led by and ain't got nothing to do with God. Nothing at all. Somebody was telling me they were believing that God was going to give them somebody else's husband. I'm like, that ain't God. That's not God. God don't do things like that. Don't you, you don't believe God got somebody just for you? You got to see, 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 most of the time we read the word, but we don't meditate on the word. When you meditate on the word of God, you ain't even got to think about what you're going to say. The Holy Ghost will just pull that word out of your spirit. And before you know it, you'll be speaking life in a dead situation. Uh, give somebody a, a nudge and tell them, get in the word, baby. Get in the word. So not only do you got to meditate on the word of God, you got to become a doer of the word. In other words, what you meditate on, then you got to start doing. Most of the time, we could talk more about being holy than being holy. We got to become doers of the word. I remember I kept reading the word years ago, years ago. My wife and I, we got married. We couldn't kill nothing and wouldn't nothing die. Buzz of love. Couldn't kill nothing and wouldn't nothing die. That was rough. Couldn't kill it. We tried to kill it, but it sprung up like Freddy Krueger. And then he came and mocked me too. Cat got your tongue. <laughs> and I couldn't say nothing back to him. Because I wasn't abiding in the word. Oh, God, y'all ain't hear me. Every time it was time of offering, I, the, the pastor kept saying, tired, 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 tired. And I'm like, I'm tired of hearing you say tired. <laughs> I 
And because I was not abiding in the word, it's like heaven had shut up on me. It was like put money in bags with holes in it. Do I have a witness in here? But then I started grabbing the word of God. I started believing the word of God. I started giving tight even when I didn't even see it. Even when I, oh my God. Let me, I found out God will always keep his word. God will always guard his word. God will always cover his word. God will always make his word come to pass. He said, give and it shall be given to Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Well, that wisdom, my God, after I decided to try this, God, I went to the post office. One check, two checks, three checks in the same mailbox. My God, I came to let you know all you got to do is trust God, believe his word, keep his word. He'll make the cloud follow you. He'll make the cloud go before you. He'll make the cloud go and keep you warm in an uncomfortable place. Do I have a witness in here? Won't he do it? Somebody said, number three, not only do you got to meditate on the word, not only do you have to be a doer of the word, but you got to put the word of God above everything else. You got to exalt the word of God above everything else. I'm coming down the road right now. I'm coming down your road right now. You got to put the word of God before your daddy. You got to put the word of God above your mother. You got to put the word of God above your pastor. You got to put your word of God, the word of God above your wife. You got to put the word of God above your children. They come to Jesus and Jesus, your mama at the door. Your mama want to talk to you. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my brother and my sister? He said, he that keeps the word of God, the same is my mother. The same is my father. The same is my brother. You got to let the word of God be a lamp unto your feet and a light on your pathway. You got to let the word of God dwell in you richly and then out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Mm, yes, while you're trying to get you a friend, get you a word. While you're trying to get you a job, get you a word. A word, a good word. If he shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory, won't he keep his word? Won't he guard his word? Mm, yes. Before God's word get back in heaven, it's got to perform what he sent it to. It can't get back in until he do what he sent it to. I need somebody. You got a word that was spoken of your life, but you haven't seen it come to pass yet. I came today to tell you, you might give up on me, but don't give up on the word. Don't give up on God. He who will come shall come and will not tarry. The word says the vision is for an appointed time, but in the end, it's going to speak and not lie. The word can't lie. God can't lie. I need somebody to give God praise over that word that's on your life. I came to let you know, yes, the way you're going to be led by the Spirit is you got to trust your spirit. You got to trust your spirit. I didn't say trust your mind. I 
God and say, trust your heart, for the heart is deceitful. But there's some stuff in your spirit that your mind don't know. There's some things in your spirit that your heart can't perceive. But you got to trust your spirit because his spirit bears witness with my spirit. Do I have a witness in here? His spirit bears witness with my spirit. The saints of old used to say, he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. Talk about me just as much as you please. I'm going to know what the words say about me. I'm an heir. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm a child of the Most High God. Talk about me all you want. I'm going to know what God said about me. He said, I am that I am. Y'all missing me. He said, I am that I am. Y'all missing me. Y'all missing me. He said, I am that he said I am. Do I have a witness in here? I am what God say I am. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell somebody, trust your spirit. Trust your spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Somebody ought to tell them, lead me. And where you lead me, I will follow. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. Yes, 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 yes. Tell somebody it's going to be a cloudy day because he's going to lead me. He's going to lead me. Yes, no more fleecing God. If it's you, Lord, make it water. If it's you, Lord, make it dry. Whatever God said, that's what I'm going to do. He comes to Peter and he said, Peter, he said, if it's you, bid me to come. Well, he sent me here to let you know you can come. You can come. You can come in the Holy of Holies. You can walk on water. You can go in deserts. If it's you, bid me to come. Some of you been waiting, but God sent me here to tell you. He said, come on, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly. Yes, I am meek and lowly. You can ask and it will be given. Some of you ain't open your mouth yet. Make your request known to the Lord. And the peace of God shall guard your heart, guard your mind. Say yes. Say yes. 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 Say yes. Say yes. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, no more trusting in zodiac signs. But I'm going to grab a word. I'm going to hold that word. I'm going to believe God. Yes. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I don't need another sign. I'm not looking for a sign. I got enough proof in me. He brought me out. He delivered me from snares of the fowler. I don't need another sign. I got proof in me. I got proof in me that the cloud covers me. The cloud covers me. The cloud goes before me. The cloud watches over me. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Yes. You got to instantly respond. You got to instantly respond. You can't wait on the word. When the word comes, you got to move. When the word comes to you, you got to respond. When the word comes, you got to act on it. Go ahead. Nudge your neighbor. 
Go ahead, nudge your neighbor and say, move, move quickly on the word of God. Yes, yes, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. Jesus told Judas, Jesus told Judas, you in the word, you in the word, you are born for me, you are born to turn me in, you are born to give me up, and whatever you're going to do, do it quick, do it quick, do it quick, do it quick, the cloud over you now, do it quick, the cloud over you now, do it quick, the cloud is over you, whatever you're going to do, do it quick, do it quick, do it quick, if you're going to believe God, believe quick, if you're going to give, give quick, be led. Brother Moses goes to the people. He said, we're leaving tonight. We're leaving tonight. We're leaving. Go borrow everything you can. We're leaving. We're leaving. Go get, get it all. Mr. Pam, I've been, I've been wondering about this a long time. How you gonna go borrow something and you leaving? How you gonna go borrow something and you leaving? on your life, supernatural favor goes upon your life. Do I have a witness in here? Supernatural favor. I, I got to, I got to go here because they dealt with it in Wednesday night's Bible study. You cannot have the cloud on your life with anger in your heart. Anger all in y'all. Been mad for five years. What you mad about? What you mad about? They were mad because God didn't take them the short route. That's what they said. You brought us out here just to kill us. Brought us out here to make us suffer. Look at this now. They had the cloud, but they said we were better off in Egypt. I had the cloud. See, if they would have gone and those giant Philistines would have come against them, they would have ran back.
they would have ran back to Egypt. But God spared them. God spared them. What has God been sparing you of? But you didn't even realize it. 